Hi, my name is Zach Wiener. Uh, on September 16, I'm going to be racing an Ironman in honor of my sisters, Jillian and Lindsay. Um, about just over a year ago, like a year and a month ago, um, we were all on vacation together. While we were on vacation together, we were all in a house fire and Jillian and Lindsay died in the fire. You know, I think in trying to figure out what to do to honor them and how to spend this past year, uh, pretty early on I decided that I wanted to race an Ironman. I feel like all throughout my life I've used fitness as an outlet. For this I knew I wanted something more than that and something I think to, to challenge me, something that uh, would help me build back routine, something that I could really like, meaningfully do for them to, to make them proud. For me, my training is kind of like a, like a sacred place where it's uninterrupted alone time that I have to really think and process and there are you know, probably over this past year, hundreds of hours that I have on a long run, long bike in the pool to really think about what has happened, to, to think about Jillian and Lindsay all the time. Um, you know, they're always with me. I have them on my, my race kit. When I started and decided I wanted to, to start training, I uh, really didn't know how to swim. Like I could probably go a lap down the pool and that, that was about it. Um, I didn't have a, a bike. Uh, I got my dad's old road bike fitted to me, but I wasn't a cyclist. You know, I'd done some Peloton rides, but that was about it. First outdoor training ride in the books. I think we got a little over 20 miles. Uh, real hills are definitely nothing like Zwift hills, but uh, learning to use the gears and uh, I'm excited to, to keep riding outside. Beautiful day today. Uh, and I was a casual runner, but um, never did anything serious. It looks like you're looking up at this mountain of, you know, I don't do any of this and I've got to swim 2.4 miles, bike 112 and run a marathon. Um, so I think more than anything, the, the biggest challenges were, were mental. Uh, you know, I just struggled swimming four laps in the pool. How in the world am I ever going to you know, swim the entire Ironman swim, um, or the days where I'm kind of tired and not really wanting to, to, to go out and train. Like, how can you kind of find whatever it takes to still get out there and do it? Or I'll be on a run and just thinking, and I'll picture what it will be like going on that carpet and the finish line and seeing all my friends and family there. And I get the chills, uh, and, it, it's something that's so real and looking back at when I started versus where I am now I've seen how far I've been able to come and it really is real uh, and I'm really excited for the race I feel like definitely a lot of emotions get brought up as it gets closer to the race because this is something that I'm doing in honor of Jillian and Lindsay and wouldn't have gotten into if it weren't for them. Yet, when it really comes close to the race, I feel like these are the times where I need them the most. And, you know, I find myself thinking about them a lot. I, I think when I think of like my story, I don't think of it as a story of an Iron Man. Um, Fitness is an outlet that I've used and it's something that I've kind of always looked towards. But when I really think about kind of what my story is, I think it's one about grief. Uh, it's a story of healing, a story of trying to find meaning in a world that's been turned upside down and, and devastated and really like obliterated. It's, you know, a story of a brother that lost his sisters and a brother just trying to make his sisters proud. I, I think, frankly, like the Iron Man is an arbitrary thing that I picked. I, I remember, like, 
uh, maybe like five years ago, reading uh, a book by, by David Goggins, and he was talking about how there are a lot of Navy SEALs that he trained with and was deployed with uh, when they passed away, and kind of his way of dealing with that was, what's the hardest thing I can think of? And he ended up doing this, I think like the, the Bad Water 135, this 135 mile race through the desert. And for me, it was like a similar, you know, what's the hardest thing I can think of? Like, oh, an Iron Man. I don't swim, I don't bike, I really don't run. Like, let's do that. But my hope is that, like, yes, there are obviously parallels and things that people can relate to who are triathletes or who are athletes, but that everything that I've been going through can apply to an artist, a musician, a dancer, a writer, right? Like this is about me trying to go out of my comfort zone, um, seeing how far I can push myself, doing things that really scare me. Uh, and, two and a half weeks I'm gonna have to sw swim with a lot of jellyfish and that's uh, not a, a very comforting thought something that definitely scares me um, I had to teach myself how to swim um, I you know I had to I think the first uh, Olympic distance triathlon that I did uh, I had to hang off one of the the kayaks for probably five minutes because I started like really freaking out and, and getting claustrophobic in the open water. Um, so all of this is, I think for me, more about, again, like going outside my comfort zone, um, seeing kind of what I can really do and accomplish, um, setting my mind to really this one goal for a year. After I decided to start training for the Ironman, I, I started noticing and seeing all of these connections to my sisters. Um, it was something I wanted to do in honor of them. And like I said, they are so intertwined with all of this. Um, so I really made the decision to try to lean in to all of the connections I have with them. They're on my chest when I run. Um, I listen to all their playlists, you know, on the bike, uh, when I'm running, so many memories have been brought up throughout all of this. Um, you know, as I'm literally learning how to ride a bike outside, um, I remembered that Lindsay, when she was at camp, had to learn how to ride a bike because she was doing a hundred mile bike ride at the end of uh, at the at the end of camp, um, and I think about that a lot. And like I know when I'm out, I'll have conversations with them. And I remember in the first half Ironman I did, I was on the bike and I just thought, I was like, hey, Lens, look at me, like, I'm doing it. Um, and I feel like really leaning in to those connections that I have with them uh, enriches the experience and just like, it, it, I think unlocks so much more meaning. Um, Jillian absolutely loved the water. Uh, she was always swimming. She got her little wristband to go in the deep end at our old pool years before I did. I like refused to, to go in the deep end. Um, and I think like one of the, the, the biggest joys I've gotten is just picturing a conversation in my head with her uh, now that I can swim and you know being in the water and just imagining me being able to swim by her side um it, it's sad but i feel like it always brings a smile to my face she did triathlons at camp when we were younger she would do just trying it like a local um, kid, youth triathlon um i, mean, I could have never <laughs> never done that um, and you know, we'd always come and watch. And so she was the one that did triathlons first. And, um, you know, now I get to, to do them too. Um, and it makes it all really special to me. And just in everything I do, I'm thinking about both of them. Um, 
and it even goes to the extent I added another half Ironman onto my race schedule this past year. Um, in July, there was a race in Geneva, Muscle Man. The only reason that I picked it was it's about 30 minutes from their camp. Um, I had never been, but I thought being able to use that race to go somewhere that was so special to them and that I had never been before um, would really make it meaningful. Um, so feeling like I could use that to be really close to them um, meant a lot to me. Um, the swim was in Seneca Lake and they went to Camp Seneca Lake. So I was swimming in the same water that they were in, um, you know, biking around. I could see their camp. We visited it Friday and Saturday before the race. And that's all I was thinking about it. It wasn't, oh, I'm about to go do this race. I was just thinking about like how amazing that I saw this place that for over a decade brought them so much joy and they had so many memories. The training for the Ironman isn't just like a way to express my grief, like it really is my grief. Um, and I think ever since we kind of made that realization, there have just been all of these parallels between what I notice happening during training and then what's happening in life. I think for me, one of the biggest ones, um, and it sounds obvious saying, but like an Ironman is, is hard. Right? Like you've, you've run the marathon after swimming two and a half miles, biking over a hundred miles. Like it's just hard. So I think the point of training sometimes is just to be hard. Um, there are gonna be workouts and there definitely have been several where like I don't feel good during it or after and like it's a real struggle, but that's kind of the point. It, it's to see when you've hit empty, how much more you can keep going. Can you find it to keep going? And I think realizing that really kind of like I feel like for me, like unlocked this new part of training where I could kind of accept like, yeah, this is going to be really hard. Like it's not going to be pretty, but there's never a like, what if, you know, it's, it's not like, am I going to go out and do it? It's like, it's going to be hard and I'm just going to go out and do it. And I think the same really holds true for grief and what this past year has been. Um, it, it's, it's hard. I live with my grief and the loss and like the sadness and the hurt constantly. It, it's undoubtedly always there. And I honestly hope it always will be there. I don't wanna ever, I don't think I'm ever going to forget or hurt any less or like not be sad or not miss Jillian and Lindsay. I, I really do always hope and really do think that's always going to be there. Um, but that I think is the point of grief. It's not something that you just wake up one day and it is no longer there. Um, but just like the training, it's hard, but it's not there's never a question of like, am I going to get out of bed today? God, it's no, I'm always going to do that. And for me, I'm always going to try my best to make my sisters proud. And I think in that way, I can honor them. Every moment of training is the Iron Man. It's all the Iron Man. Um, so for me, everything in this past year has been the Ironman for me. All of the, the, the runs, the bikes, the stretching, you know, the, the good days, the bad days, it's all been the Ironman. So I am so excited to go out and see what I can do uh, in now just under three weeks um, on my birthday. Um, but I am so grateful for this entire experience, I think what it has 
taught me, how much it has forced me to grow, and I think for all of the meaning that I find in it. Um, there's a poem by E.E. E. Cummings, I Carry Your Heart With Me, that popped into my head when I was uh, doing one of my first races, and it's something that I think about a lot when I'm out there, and it, particularly it's, you know, I carry your heart with me, I carry it in my heart. And then later on he says, everything that is done by me is your doing. Um, so, you know, as I'm looking to the race, this isn't something for me. Uh, this is for Jillian and Lindsay. Uh, and I think more than anything, I am really excited to, to go out there and make them proud. Thank you.